Good morning, guys. Uh, in the lecture series of uh, integral transform and complex analysis, uh, up to the last lecture, I finished uh, complex analysis, and today I'm going to start your next topic, that is integral transform. In integral transform, actually, there are two topics which we have to study. Uh, one is Fourier transform, and then another is Z transform. Uh, so, from today, I am going to start Fourier transform. Fourier transform. Actually, uh, this is a type of integral transform. Integral transform means if uh, you take its literary meaning. What is the integral transform? Uh, that is a very simple question and a very simple answer in one sentence. You, what is integral transform? Transform means conversion, transformation. Integral transform means that if we convert the value of a function with the help of integration, is called integral transform. That is the simple meaning. Integral transform means if we transform value of function by the help of integral, then that is called integral transform. And Fourier transform is a type of integral transform. Uh, we define it as if fx is a function. fx is a function and uh, which is defined in entire range from minus infinity to infinity, uh, any interval a to b, uh, then then what is the integral transform? What is the Fourier transform? If we take transform of this f of, if we take first we take integral transform i of f of x. I told you actually transformation of this function with the help of integration. Then this is defined as a to b f of x and k of s x. Actually, this is. This is a function of x, and we introduce another function k of s x, and then integrate this. So you see that this is uh, our right hand, and the right hand side. This is our definite integral with limit a and b. Uh, a and b may be finite and may be infinite. Then a and b can be also finite. We can have also some finite value, and uh, a and b may be infinite. And then in this way, this is the uh, finite integral transform, and it is infinite integral uh, transform, right? Uh, and here, actually, you see that this is integral with respect to x, and integral limit definite integral. So finally, here you get a function of s, and denoted by capital F of s. Actually, now this is the basic definition. This is that means capital F s parameter is t, parameter is transform. The capital Fs is the integral transform of Fx. And here, actually, this function, that is very important rule of this function, k of Fx, it is called kernel of transform. Kernel of transform. Basically, uh, value of, you know, various types of the integral transform uh, will depend upon the kernel of transform. So if uh, this is uh, uh, an exponential function, then this is another type of integral transform. If this is uh, a complex integral function, means uh, if uh, we take this as e to power i s x, exponential function, complex exponential function, then this integral transform is called Fourier transform. Simply, or you can say Fourier uh, complex Fourier transform, like that, and it is given by f of f of x a to b take minus infinity to infinity infinite e to power i s x into f x dx actually this is the value here we are taking value of kernel is e to power i s x f x is a function and limit here we are taking here we infinite limits so this is and this is naturally again this is on the right hand side, there is a definite integral with the lower limit minus infinity, upper limit plus infinity. So, after integration with respect to x, we will get finally a function of s. And this is denoted by capital Fs. Right? This is actually called 
Fourier transform. This is called Fourier transform. This is called Fourier transform. Here limits are infinite, so we can say this is infinite Fourier transform. Here also in kernel function, function i introduced, you know that i is under root minus 1, that is the imaginary value. So this is also called Fourier complex transform. This is also called Fourier complex transform. Right? And from here, if you see that, uh, we can also take the value of fx by the Inversion of this by the uh, inverse uh, taking the inverse value of this and that is the uh, Fourier inverse transform of v. So this is the first definition and from here we are going to start my syllabus. Here we have to learn, we have to in my mind what is the actually Fourier transform of any function. Here fx is any function if we take function and by the help of this definite integral if we changing this uh, function into another function, then this process, this is called Fourier transform. Because of infinite limit, it is also known as Fourier in transform. In, in form. And also here, uh, in kernel, we have the function of exponential e to power is, so it is also called Fourier cosine transform. If you take this, if you open this, because you know that by Euler's formula, e to power i theta equal to cos theta, Plus I think this is the formula, Euler's formula. Uh, if you substitute value here and take a real and imaginary part, then you will get also two types of the uh, complex, two types of the complex transform, Fourier transform. And one is Fourier cosine transform, and the other is Fourier sine transform. As if we get this, if real part Fc of f of x if we take this right then then this is and limit that is 0 to infinity we take limit 0 to infinity because 100 is this is 0 fx and real part so cos sx d right if we take the uh, real part of this if we open this then this is the, the Fourier uh, cosine transform and this is denoted by f c of s. This is also second form and this is called Fourier cosine transform. Right? If we take the imaginary part of this, then this is also denoted by f s of f of x, this is again given to infinity, fx into sin sx dx equal to fs of s. This is the uh, imaginary part and this is also another transform and which is called Fourier sin transform, right? All are the infinite transforms. These are the basically three main definitions. This is the entire Fourier transform. If we take kernel value e to power i s x. If we express it to two parts by Euler's formula, if we take real part, then we get this. This is Fourier cosine transform. If we take imaginary part, this limit zero to infinity limit, we have changed the entire region in sine and in case of sine and cos, we take only limit from zero to infinity. Then this is the uh, Fourier sine transform. These are the basic uh, formula for Fourier transform and also from this formula we take, we take from these three formula this is formula number one this is formula number two and this is formula number three from these three formula we can also obtain the inverse of these transform from here if we take define inverse formula inverse of transform So from here, actually, fx is inverse. That is that is the f inverse of f of capital S. This is just inversion value. Inversion value means transform this. This is again limit minus e to the e to power minus i s x to the i s x. fx means 
capital F of S and parameter uh, with respect to function you have to integrate is S. So this is just uh, inversion value, you transform the value and this is your uh, Fourier in inverse Fourier transform. This is your actually inverse Fourier transform, right? If, if you have the uh, transform value that is that capital FS and you have to find the inverse value Inverse value means value of original function. Then by this formula, we can find the value of that original function, and that is uh, that is called inverse uh, Fourier transform. Similarly, you can define inverse Fourier sine transform, in your inverse Fourier cosine transform. If uh, inverse Fourier cosine transform by formula number two, so we can define f of f equal to f inverse of c of fx similarly you can define as integral 0 to infinity of uh, capital fc of s cos sx ds this is your uh, Fourier the uh, inverse Fourier cosine this is the uh, next formula in series of inversion uh, you can see that this is called inverse Fourier cosine transform right this is just inverse value of the formula number two similarly by formula number three you can define inverse Fourier sine transform inverse Fourier sine transform fx equal to uh, f inverse uh, of s of f s F inverse of capital FS and this is by integral 0 to infinity F S of S sine SX DS. This is your uh, Fourier inverse sine transform, that is the Fourier inverse sine transform right this is the Fourier inverse sine transform so here and this is the formula number four this is formula number five and this is your formula number six now uh, in this chapter in integral transform I just started your first topic first unit that is that is the third module, third unit of your syllabus. That is the Fourier transform. In Fourier transform, these are these are six basic formula of number one. That is the Fourier transform. Uh, that form I take the formula integral minus two to infinity e to power i s x f x g s. On the right hand side, after integration, we will we will get a function of s, and we are denoting here capital F of s. That is the main formula. That is the Fourier transform, our Fourier infinite transform, our Fourier complex transform, right? And we take real energy part. Then we will get to another transform here. One is Fourier. Uh, cosine transform if we take the real part that is integral 0 to infinity e to power uh, sorry uh, fx e to uh, cos sx dx and we take the imaginary part then we get the uh, formula of Fourier sine transform that is integral 0 to infinity fx sine sx dx right and these are three basic formula of Fourier transform and now we convert it uh, we transform this again and from here we get the next formula that is the inverse Fourier transform that is minus e to the power minus minus SSX FS DS parameter T no parameter is TS and from here my after integration you will get here uh, your original function if Fourier transform is given similarly for real part we get the inverse Fourier uh, cosine transform by this formula formula number 5 and then for imaginary part that is the Fourier inverse sine transform that is the formula 6 these are the 6 basic formula right now in this chapter uh, further we will discuss about the properties of these various transforms before that I take one numerical example if any uh, algebraic function is given then how will you find a Fourier transform 
until I will discuss other properties of a uh, Fourier transform. To take numerical example, find Fourier transform of function is given fx equal to 0 when x is less than or equal to a, this is equal to 1 when a line between x line between a to b, this is equal to a 0 when x is greater than of b. Right? This is the given function and you have to find a Fourier transform. Right? Fx is this. Then, very simple solution. We know that Fourier transform of function Fx is defined as integral minus BT e to power i s x f x d x right this is the uh, basic formula right just i define this take this formula but here function is defined in three parts because uh, in case of Fourier transform function must be defined in entire region from minus infinity to plus infinity so in three region so by property of, of Definite integral, we can break uh, integral on either side in three parts minus infinity to a minus infinity to a e to power i s i s x f x d x plus a to b e to power i s x d f x d x and plus from b to plus infinity e to power i s x f x d x right by using property of the integral, we break this integral into three parts according to given definition of function. In first case, fx is zero, because from less than a, fx is zero, so this integral is zero. In this case, fx is one. Third case, when function value is greater than b, again fx is zero. This first integral and third integral is zero. And finally, we get Finally, we get f of fx equal to integral a to b e to power i s x into 1 dx. Now, this is simple definite integral. Integrate this, you know that integration of i s x is e to power i s x upon i s limit of b to a. Now, substitute our and over limit, this is 1 upon i s, that is e to power i s b minus e to the power i s b. This is your final answer. This is the value of uh, Fourier uh, transform of given function. And you see that uh, here after integration, after finding the uh, value of Fourier transform, we are getting the function of s, that is character f s, purely function of. So uh, here you can see that, uh, that is the integral transform of this f x. f x is function of x. And you are transfer, transferring this uh, into another parameter fs by the help of integral transform. So it is called uh, integral transform. And because we are taking value of kernel is e to power sx, so I have told you uh, due to which this is uh, called, this is known as a Fourier transform, or you can say also Fourier uh, complex transform. Right? This is the first method. Now, here, I will discuss various other properties of Fourier transform in which uh, first of all we are taking here Fourier integral theorem. Fourier integral theorem. That is very important theorem eh? uh, and uh, the uh, proof of this theorem is uh, just beyond your curriculum syllabus. Uh, but uh, application is very important because uh, we, we can see that in some numerical questions uh, there are uh, you have to find the value of Fourier transform as well as also you have to find the some integral value with the help of this 
and also uh, you will see that is some very typical integral uh, or you can say improper integral uh, are very uh, calculated very easily by the help of integral transform and by using this term. What is the statement of this term? Uh, if uh, let fx be a function uh, satisfying uh, various conditions Details conditions in interval. Uh, if you take interval minus L to N, L is any real number. Satisfying this, then fx equal to 1 upon pi integral 0 to infinity, integral minus infinity, uh, f of t e into cos of uh, lambda cos of lambda t minus x and dt d lambda yeah, this is the actually complex integral uh, 1 upon pi 0 to infinity integral minus infinity ft cos lambda times t minus x x is another value this is original parameter t is just a parameter lambda is another parameter Actually, after integration, we will get a function again, function of t. That is a constant value. This is the uh, and here uh, as l tending to infinity, the range of this, this because the range of the function is finite given, but uh, when you take the limit uh, as l tends to infinity, then it will be the entire range. This is the statement. And this is actually uh, proved by the help of uh, Fourier series. Uh, Fourier series you have already studied in the uh, second semester. If what is the Fourier series? You know that any function can be expanded uh, by the help of Fourier series in form of infinite, infinite series, and that series uh, uh, will contain various power of cosine and sine. And what is actually main important thing is uh, this is applicable for the function. Those are satisfying various condition, and in Fourier series, we have already uh, studied uh, various conditions. Uh, various condition actually, there are three conditions uh, for any function which is defined in an interval. Uh, one one function must be periodic. You know, and do know that what is the periodic function uh, <coughs> in given interval? Uh, function must be periodic. Number one, number two, function must be a uh, single valued and also uh, function uh, uh, function must be uh, discontinuous. But uh, uh, if a, a finite number of points of uh, discontinuity exists in the given interval, uh, and also a finite number of points of maxima or minima uh, attained in the uh, given day, these are the uh, these conditions. If these conditions are satisfying, then we get uh, this integral and this is the Fourier uh, integral theorem and also from this theorem actually I have told you the uh, proof of this theorem is uh, beyond of your syllabus but application is very important uh, and if you, you if you see this function cos of lambda times c minus x uh, and uh, you know that there is a formula uh, cos a minus b and you know that uh, by integrality formula cos a minus b can be expanded cos a cos b plus sin a sin b if we plug the split uh, two part and uh, take uh, there are two possibilities because f is any function so there are two possibilities uh, always occur one function is even r function is r if we take these two possibilities uh, and expand after expanding this we get two integral then we see that value of fx can be expressed uh, in two different type of integral uh, in which only uh, sine terms exist uh, and uh, only cosine terms so we can say there are two integrals those are known as uh, Fourier sine integral and Fourier cosine integral and these two formula about which I have already told you in the introduction uh, keep it here uh, in some sums you have to find the uh, some improper type of integral and those can be uh, calculated, those can be evaluated very easily by the help of the uh, Fourier integral theorem. So if we expand this, 
Take this as equation one. If we take this now, we take from one f x equal to one upon pi integral zero to infinity minus infinity to infinity f of t that is cos lambda t cos lambda x plus sine lambda t sine lambda x this is dt and d lambda and we open the bracket we get two integral one upon pi is equal to infinity this is the form if we take this ft and cos lambda x so we can write as cos lambda x minus infinity to infinity ft cos lambda t and this is again uh, dt d lambda plus another integral 1 upon pi 0 to infinity we take sine lambda t first and then integral minus infinity to infinity f of t uh, lambda x f of t we take uh, sine lambda t dt d lambda take this as equation number 2 right then there are two possibilities uh, about the nature of function f uh, fx and on these two we get two integral if first case if fx is uh, if we take fx is odd if fx is odd then f t into cos lambda t is also odd right this is also odd and ft sin lambda t is even so by property of definite integral we get fx equal to now this is my probability and this is an odd function so it becomes 0 and this is 2 times so we get 2 upon pi 0 to infinity sine lambda x uh, 0 to infinity uh, f of t sine lambda t dt d lambda we get this one we get this one and this one is uh, this is also an integral and this is known as this is known as Fourier sine integral and by this formula you can solve some typical type or you can say improper integral very easily if we take the fx is odd similarly Similarly, if fx is even function, then ft into cos lambda t is even and ft sin lambda t is odd. And then again we get then equation uh, two reduces to fx is because in this case this is even function this is two times and this is completely vanishing zero so we get and this is two times two upon pi integral zero to infinity cos lambda x again integral zero to pi the ft cos lambda t uh, dt d lambda we get this one right we get part of this one 
and this is again an integral type value of function in terms of integral and this is known as Fourier uh, cosine integral right Fourier cosine integral so these are the two important results which uh, obtained by the uh, Fourier integral theorem and that is the uh, Fourier sine integral Fourier sine integral means fx equal to 2 upon pi 0 to infinity sine lambda x integral 0 to infinity ft sine lambda t dt dt lambda and other is 2 upon pi 0 to infinity cos lambda x 0 to infinity ft cos lambda t uh, dt d lambda uh, d lambda dt right these are two important integral so, so these are the basic form uh, and uh, uh, by using these integral we can solve also uh, some important uh, questions such important problems this in which uh, this what is Fourier sine integral and Fourier, Fourier cosine integral uh, and now I will discuss these are the some basic uh, concepts uh, based on the Fourier transform so first what is the formula of Fourier transform then uh, we split this into real energy part then we get the Fourier cosine transform Fourier sine transform and we use the inversion then we get the uh, inverse of Fourier transform inverse of Fourier cosine transform inverse of Fourier sine transform and then we take a uh, Fourier integral theorem and from which we get two uh, uh, separate integrals one is Fourier sine integral, Fourier cosine integral and Fourier sine integral now uh, I will proceed in to name the next lecture uh, with properties properties of this just I introduce this and then uh, there, there are various uh, properties uh, by which uh, we can solve the uh, Fourier transform, uh, Fourier cosine transform, uh, Fourier sine transform very easily. And we take the properties based on the uh, Fourier transform. Uh, you can explore this, you can extend these properties uh, for the uh, Fourier trans sine transform as well as Fourier cosine transform. So, next, uh, if we just introduce you what are the properties of Fourier transform and how you can explore these properties uh, for Fourier sine and cosine so first if we take the properties of Fourier transform Fourier transform if we take the first property simply that is the linear property what is the linear property uh, if uh, fs suppose fs is Fourier transform of uh, a given function f of fx and g of s capital g of s is Fourier transform of another function g of x and e and b are simply constants then Fourier transform of a times fx plus b times gx is equal to a of f of capital S, b of g of capital S. This is the linear property. Means you can take inside the Fourier transform uh, in a bracket linearly by uh, taking constants outside the transformation just as a multiple. Uh, similar to the uh, definite integral, you know that in integral case we can see, and you can now you can explore this property for, for Fourier sine transform and Fourier cosine transform. So, so for example, if we take the Fourier cosine transform, similarly same property. This is f x plus b times g of x. So naturally, this is f Fourier cosine transform and b times Fourier uh, cosine transform. Or if, if we take Fourier sine transform, similarly we can take this property as this is a times f of s Fourier sine transform and b times Fourier uh, sine transform of another function. Right? This property, can, this property can be extended for Fourier cosine transform and Fourier sine transform. And proof is very simple and. Uh, there is also not part of this, but you can solve uh, by using simple linear property of definite integral. You can prove this. Okay, I am uh, finishing this uh, uh, lecture up to this topic. In next lecture, there are three other properties 
of the uh, Fourier transform uh, that is uh, uh, change of scale property, modulation property, uh, shifting property and I will discuss uh, these properties uh, and then I will take uh, various numerical examples that by using these properties how can we solve the uh, Fourier transform of given function. Okay, thank you.